Hello, my friends, my Kim McLean fan club. I am back and I am currently working on our hexagon border. And I have all but one of my borders attached. And you can see, I know this is not hanging beautifully. However, you can see I have three of my borders already attached. And I'm very excited that I am getting um, closer to moving on to my next scallop order, which comes after this one. Um, but I thought I would talk about my process as I went through this, as I've gone through my other uh, steps along the way. And on my, um, my backgrounds, I used a variety. Again, uh, with everything in this project, I am trying desperately to use up my stash. Um, so on my backgrounds, and you can just see from these two here, they're very different, and I used several different pieces of fabric that I had that were just big enough for me to get my seven and a half inch squares, or seven. I can't remember how big we cut these, but anyway, however big they were, uh -huh, I cut them, and then I, you know, I made my uh, hexes as I had done with, um, at the beginning, with our medallion, we had those four trial runs, and I used a lot of different fabrics, so all of my hexes are different. Um, I duplicated a couple of my fabrics like that were um, the flower and some of the centers are the same um, but all of my hexes are different and I separated out my backgrounds and tried to distribute those for the four sides of the of the uh, border because I like to have that balance and I did the same with uh, my hexagons and then you can see up at the top of my my uh, board here that I have got my half square pieces for this final border and I have them in color um, by color so that I can try and distribute that as I go along um, but as I did each one of these you know I looked at the picture in the book about the orientation of the hexagon on the background and I will tell you my first one I sewed on incorrectly um, and I discovered that what I needed to do was this V needed to be on the diagonal of my block. So what I did was I took each one of my squares and I doubled them over and I put a crease on there. I opened it back out and then I, I meant to have my ruler and it is over there huh, on the other side. But what I've done is when I lay, put this in here, what I did was I measured from the V to the corner that needed to be three and one eighth. And again, I did the same thing from the top to this corner needs to be three and one eighth. And that way I know that I have this centered. And you also have, you know, you have the seam on your hexes. I don't know if you can see my seams, but those seams on my hexes line up with my diagonal. And if they are the same distant distance from the corner, then they should be in the center of my square. So then I, once I've done that and I've got it all pinned in place, and of course I applicate it down with matching thread, yay! When I got done with that, then I would take each one of these and I would turn it and orient it this way so that it is square. Then when I take my six and a half inch ruler or whatever size ruler you want to use, um, which I'm going to reach over and grab mine. I'm back. So once I have these on here, then what I found is if I, because we want this piece when we cut it out, we want it to be, um, five and a half or just five and seven sixteenths is what they say in the book. But I went ahead and went with uh, the uh, five and a half. And then if you measure from this point right here, here's this little point. If you measure over three eighths from that and down three eighths from the top. So I don't know if you can see that I've measured down from this highest point here and that leftmost point there. Um, that I then have on this side, I will have three-eighths of an inch to my five and a half. I will have three-eighths of an inch to the to the five and a half at the bottom. And so then, I know this is a bad example, but anyway, um, I would cut this side off and cut the top part off, flip my block, and then do the same thing again. And I will end up with my five and a half inch square. Yay! 
Okay. And you can see some of mine I did with um, not really paying attention too much to what was in the picture. Some of them are very different. Same piece of fabric, but um, different. This one obviously has some stripes on it. And so we're um, seeing, you know, some symmetry with that. Uh, this one is just another plain one again. And this one has got some flowers that I tried to center in. But it was a lot of fun to play with the different fabrics that I had when I was creating my hexes um, because you could really create some wonderful designs within the fabric um, just creating that motif, um, the, using the same motif on each one of your hexagons as you went around. Um, and so now that I have got these, almost all of these done, I lay them out on my cutting table and then I begin to place my squares and I don't have a, a length of cutting table in my sewing room that allows me to lay like this is the um, the top or bottom it's the one that has nine hexagons in a row so I don't have a space that's long enough to do all nine so I would do four or five and lay them out and recognizing that this is, let's say if it was gonna go up here, that I would be looking at what it was going next to so that I would create something that didn't, you know, have a redundance of um, uh, colors. You know, I didn't want a bunch of reds together, or blues together. So I, I paid attention to that where I was starting and then I would just, you know, take my colors from my palette and lay them out in a way that I'm trying to create that balance on that border. And then again, I get to the end, whatever my end was going to be over here. And then I would try and make sure that I ended up with colors that would be um, not too heavy towards one color or another. And then I, you know, obviously I sewed my, my little blocks together after I had cut them down. Now, when, when you get this piece, when I've added my... Uh, when I add my squares around here, so it's going to be like this, actually. Um, and you do want to pay attention to look at the picture on the the, um, the pattern book and make sure that your, I, I uh, reference the V on the hexagon. Where is the V facing? So on the sides, the V faces in. And on the top and bottom, the V faces, again, in that same direction. So I wanted to make sure that all of my hexagons are going in the correct direction as I sew them on. Um, but anyway, as you sew those, um, you square these up, then, um, you know, you want to trim them down to seven and a half, which is why I really wasn't too worried about when I cut these out at five and a half. I knew the ultimate final size of the block before I sewed it into the border would be determined after I sewed the, the squares or the uh, squared it up with my, my triangles. And so again, you know, I wasn't too particular about that. Then I sewed these together, attached them to my quilt. And then once I get this last one on, I am ready to move on to the bigger scalloped border, which I'm looking forward to, the little bitty border that goes around that. And then we're gonna move on to the octagon border, which is something a little bit different. So I hope to see you again very soon. And don't forget, you can subscribe and like and all of those wonderful things that we do here on YouTube. But anyway, I hope that you have wonderful time sewing and working on your masterpieces as well. I'll talk to you soon, okay? Bye-bye.